The story begins with warriors running towards their prey. Their weapons are not the weapons that we see in this modern age, but a weapon made out of stone and wood. One of them let out a war cry, and all of them respond. Our MC is also among them, frightened at the sight of their prey. After all, their prey is the mammoth. The mammoth, that we only see in screens and read in books. However, it was right in front of our MC's eyes. They were shaken to their core by fear and joy. But none of them falter. They face it head on. Let their life blood boil. This was the moment our MC felt that he is alive. He is living. This is where the legend begins. Next, seven college friends went on a graduation trip, and they are all members of Anthropology Seminar. Our MC, Tega, a short hair guy named Ren. A four-eye name, Arata, a lady name, Yuka, Rikako, and Chihiro. And lastly a guy with a hat name, Riku. They are also there to gather topics for their graduation thesis by looking around at the Australian Aboriginal lifestyle and cave paintings and stuffs. And Tega is anxious because they are about to be graduate and he doesn't know what to do with his life. Arata tries to cheer him up a little, but his advice was not that helpful to Tega, who have lost all his confidence. Rikako also put some words to Tega but her words are stabbing him like daggers. Anyways, he is still glad that he came to that trip, because six months ago, he and his girlfriend broke up, and before coming to this trip, he tried to invite her, however, she declined him saying that she has plans with her boyfriend. He was surprised after hearing that, she already got a boyfriend, and he is still hanging in there in the hope. Anyways, they were in the same college, so not seeing each other's was impossible. So after they broke up, they stay as a college friend. He was happy to see her happy like that. But now he can't stop to think about her in this trip. Ren wake him up from his daydream with a very weird question, making him mad. But he was mad because Ren stretches his name and it sounds like Tiger, which is not his name. Arata finds something after climbing a little hill. And right below that hill, Arata was standing. He finds something amazing. A cave. Everyone gets surprised to see such a huge cave there. Like any of us who are watching this video, they also get curious and gets ready to explore that cave. And that brilliant idea came out from Arata's mouth. Like a gentleman, Riku asks the ladies about their opinion. Yuka is little scared with that idea, but Chihiro and Rikako are cool with it. But the boys are already inside the cave. At that moment, none of them thought that this cave exploration will change their life completely. As they venture deep inside, the cave become darker and darker. Luckily they have flashlights with them. When they light their flashlights, they are shocked to see the sight in front of them. There are cave paintings, with such details and all, hunting and being hunted, and domesticating a wolf. They are all awed by those paintings on the wall. And Riku finds something very interesting. The cave is not in the guide. That means the cave is unexplored, or undocumented. And it has ancient cave painting in it. Tega was mesmerized by the paintings. The cave paintings looked like it was shining almost as if it was leading him to a new world. And his heart was racing. And Arata was surprised to see his friend Tega can also make face like that. Tega is also surprised with this feeling he is having right now. He has never felt something like this before. He has never been moved from the bottom of his heart. However, after seeing those paintings, he is so moved that tears have form in his eyes. Suddenly he feels a headache. And not only he, the ladies are also feeling the same. Arata notices everyone that it's the gas and tells them to cover their mouth. They gets ready to get out from there. After all, caves have been known to release natural gas on rare occasions, and they are poisonous and flammable, so it is extremely dangerous. Everyone starts to panic. Riku, who seems to be still cool up his head, tries to calm them down. Then suddenly the cave starts to rumble jumble. The cave starts to caving in. Riku tells everyone to get down. Tega, who is near Yuka, helps her from getting seriously hurt. But they still gets buried in the stone. Tega is also scared thinking he is going to die. In that moment he remembers his ex-girlfriend, who told him that he never seriously loved her, and that he doesn't love anybody. That was the reason that she broke up with him. And she was right, he never felt anything when he was with her. As he was falling deep into the sorrow, thinking that he was going to die there, he hears a voice, and it's Arata. Tega was blocking all the stones from falling onto Yuka. What a man. Others are also safe, and none of them suffered any serious damage. However, the exit was blocked. Since they can't go back from where they came, they gets ready to press on and find the exit. They walked for several hours, but they didn't find any sign of exit. Finally they saw a light in the darkness, they all rushes toward the light. There is a small exit to the outside in front of them. Everyone is happy that they can finally go outside. They come outside, excited to see the light and that they made it out from that cave. But their eyes get wide open when they saw the sight in front of them. What they saw outside was not the plains that they were before, but a thick forest with big big trees. 
Arata tries to calm the lady saying that they have been walking for hours, so it's obvious that they are not in the same location as they were before. Tega is finding it difficult to believe that even if they have walked that far, but this is like they have come to another country, and their phones doesn't have signals. Then they hear some sounds coming from the forest. This scared them even more. Then the thing that was making the sound come out, the animal was big and has claws and eating leaves from the tree, and looks like a horse. That strange thing clearly showcased the fact that this place was not the world that they live in. A look of utter despair spread across everyone's faces. Of course Tega was the same. He felt like he was gonna go crazy from fear and anxiety. But deep in his chest, something was welling up inside of him. His heart was racing. They are shocked and confused to see that strange animal, which looks like a horse but also doesn't. However, Riku seems to notice that animal. Then another sound comes out from the forest. The sound made those horses run away from there. Then wolves starts to come out from the forest. Jump on one of those horses and take it down with one bite. The wolf and Tega's eyes met. The eyes of the apex predator, as if it was saying you are next boy. Tega's heart starts to beat super fast as if it was about to come out from his chest. Arata tells him to get down and hide before they notice him. But the wolf have already noticed them and are ready to attack them next. Then the wolves stopped. The cave behind Tega and all starts to collapse. Thanks to that sound of the cave collapsing, the wolf seems to have ran away from there. Then Arata notices something strange. The cave is gone, and what's more, the cave was right on the cliff of that hill. They are confused and scared about what's going on there. But for now Arata suggests them to climb up to a high place and confirm their surroundings. They starts to climb up the hill. Ren doesn't want to believe the reality and thinks that this must be a prank show. A foreign prank show. Rikako informs him about those wolves, which looked really real. Riku notices those wolves, and he also notices the horse-like thing, and he thinks that it was Chalicotherium, and he knew about that because he likes to read about extinct animals more than anthropology, and that Chalicotherium was an animal from Pleistocene. Ren still doesn't accept the reality, even after seeing that animal firsthand, because the Pleistocene, that was million year ago. He doesn't think that they slipped a million years just because they looked at the cave paintings. He is super sure that they are being filmed for a TV show. But none of them respond to that question of Ren. That they are in a reality TV show. They climbed the rocky mountain for hours. All they could do was walk in silence. While harboring a feeling of unease. And from all this they realized one thing that they can't go back. They couldn't put their anxiety into words. Finally they reached to the top where they can clearly see their surroundings. But once again, their eyes get wide open after seeing their surrounding. The valley below that rocky mountain, there are mammoths roaming that place. With this, one thing is confirmed that they can't go back home. They are all in despair after seeing that sight of that mighty being. At the same time, the scene was so beautiful that Tega was overcome with emotion. The size of that beast was bigger than that of an African elephant. It's completely covered in fur. Its ears are small compared to the rest of its body. And has long and curved tusks. Without a doubt, they are sure that, that's a mammoth. Riku is excited to see a real living mammoth in front of his eyes. On the other hand, Ren is shaking in fear. He doesn't want to believe that, if he also says it's real. Then he will be admitting that they are in prehistoric time. Ladies are also crying because this means they can't go back home. Arata reminds them something. That they have to be alive to go back home. They gets ready to find a safe place to spend the night. And to find a safe place, they go down the mountain slope. When they were going down, Tega asks Riku an interesting question. That is that the mammoths were alive relatively late in the Cenozoic era. And Chalicotherium is supposed to be from the early Cenozoic. They're roughly 1 to 2 million years apart. Riku is also surprised with this question because they saw both of those animals just some few moments ago. Arata gives them the answer they are looking for. And informs them that whatever, written in the paleontology books isn't always truth. No one have seen the real truth after all, except for them. But they can't go and write that in the paleontology book, now that they are in the past. After searching for some time, they finally found a nice place to stay and spend the night. A small cave, but it has a big opening. There's a chance that animals can attack them. So they gets ready to collect some woods and cover the opening. They starts to cover the opening with big woods and stones. Since there are no big woods around that area, they gets ready to go to the forest and collect some. Arata, Riku and Tega went into the forest to collect some woods. It starts to get dark, so they thought it's better to return before it gets any darker. Then some sound come out from the forest. The mammoths are passing from there. Suddenly they get surrounded by mammoths. Now they are in trouble. The big trees are falling with just the touch of the mammoth's leg. They have to be very careful, or a little mistake and they are dead. Somehow, they manages to come out alive from that valley of dead. 
That night when they went to sleep, they all wish it to be a dream when they wake up, they will be in the hotel bed. But there is no chance of that happening. Tega also wants it to be a dream. But there is no way he could believe that, because the smell of the mammoth and the sound of its breathing were embedded vividly in his mind. After some time, the sounds of the animals started to come out, the howling of the wolves, the sound of the mammoths, and some nasty sounds of monkeys, making their new visitors difficult to sleep. And what's more, the fire is about to go out. And if that fire goes out, the animals might come near to their safe house. So Arata gets ready to go out and put some more woods so the fire will keep burning. In that darkness, Tega noticed the presence of something watching them. But the other didn't notice anything like that. After that, laughters start to come out from the forest. Oh boy. The boys get shocked and scared after hearing that laughters. Because they know who are those mother-father laughing at them at night. The girl starts to scream and cry after that. Only Rikako seems a little calmer than other two girls. So Tega asks her to take the other girls to the corner of the cave behind them. Tega picks up a stick to use as a weapon if those things come any closer. Tega asks Arata to use the flashlight since they can't see them. When Arata on that flashlight, what they saw in that dark night were only the glowing eyes of those night monsters. After seeing that Arata starts to panic because those predators are there for them. Tega calms him down saying that only bear can break through their fence and that it's fine. Even though he said it was fine, but obviously he didn't have any faith. The pack of animals surrounded them for a while, but eventually they stopped making noise and none of them were able to get much sleep at all. And eventually, the night turned into day. From the last night laughter, Riku noticed that those were hyenas. And if those were hyenas, Tega thinks that they are in Africa. But it was not that simple if they are in Cenozoic. Riku informs Tega that hyenas also lived on Eurasian continent, Europe, and China. If that's the case, Tega tells them that they should accept that this isn't a dream or a prank. If they don't accept that, then they will surely die. Riku and Arata also thinks the same. And now that they have accepted that this is real, they gets ready to find some water and food. And Riku have done some search before they all woke up. He found a river that flows into the lake where they first saw the mammoths. Arata doesn't want to go to that mammoth forest. Riku informs him that the mammoths are not that dangerous to them, as long as they don't provoke them. The large carnivores are the ones they should really fear. Anyways, they gets ready to go down the mountain and search for food and water. Surprisingly, Chihiro is ready to go with them. And she wants to go with them because she wants to take a picture of a mammoth. She acting like that, lighten the mood a little. Next, four of them have entered the forest. They are having little difficult with the direction because they are in the forest. But Riku seems to have a compass with him. He figured that it'd come in handy if they ever time slipped to ancient times. Well, outdoor activities are just a hobby of his. That's why he has a compass. They finally hear the sound of the river and Chihiro is super happy to go to the river. Riku stops her from rushing over to it. Because it's a river in the forest and it's dangerous. Because it's a hunting ground for all predators. They arrive to the riverside, with Tega walking in front. The water is a hunting ground of a very dangerous predator. The crocodiles, even when the world was ruled by the dinosaurs, the crocodiles used to prey on them. Even in present day, they are considered the apex predator of freshwater ecosystems. Even since ancient time, they have ruled the waters. Anyways, Tega and others have come there to collect water. We'll have to see if they are lucky enough to see a crocodile of the Cenozoic era. Near the riverbank, they noticed some deers calmly drinking the water and thought that it's safe there. However, Tega didn't let his guard down. He was keeping an eye on that deer. After some time there was a movement near that deer. Suddenly a big crocodile jump at that deer and pull it underwater. Shocking Riku and Arata, who were also keeping an eye on that deer. However, Chihiro is confused to see them reacting like that because she didn't see that deer being attacked by the crocodile. Because she was busy collecting water, Tega notices same type of movement near where Chihiro was standing. A big crocodile jumps at Chihiro, but before it could reach to Chihiro, Tega attacks it with his stick spear. The crocodile is double in size of today's crocodile. That attack of Tega didn't do any damage to that strong predator. It bite his stick into pieces. Riku and Arata are just shocked to see a crocodile of that size. Riku helped Chihiro and move her to higher ground, while Tega was still holding that crocodile on his arm. Their eyes meet each other and the crocodile is like, sorry bro, I was just trying to scare her. And now that she is further from me, I'll just go back to the water. After saying that the kind crocodile went back to the water, without disturbing anyone, it seems like it was really just trying to scare Chihiro. And there was no other ulterior motive. His friends come to him asking if he is alright. And they are shocked to see such a huge crocodile for the first time in their life. 
Chihiro thanks Tega for saving her life. Otherwise, she would have been that crocodile's food. However, she forgot that the crocodile was just trying to scare her and nothing else. Arata notices that Tega seems to be little down. And he is down because if only he had an iron spear, or something even harder than that stick, he would have taken down that crocodile. This surprises Arata, because Tega was thinking of taking down that huge crocodile. He tells Tega that he should be happy that he managed to come out alive. But Tega was only thinking of killing that thing, so that they would have been the one eating it. He doesn't want to be eaten, and if they don't eat, they will die. After hearing Tega's words, they all stand still there, watching him in silence. Something have awakened inside Tega after coming to this new world. After that, they safely collect the water and start headed back. On their way they were enveloped by the heavy mood. Because this world is the land of the survival of the fittest. Their way to the camp was blocked by the mammoths. And Chihiro is super happy because she got to take the picture of mammoth. Since they can't go through that route, they gets ready to take a detour. On their way, Riku finds some kind of fruit and turns out its fig. They gets ready to collect a lot of them and surprise the other three. Then Tega suddenly notices something and rushes toward it. Friends are surprised to see him acting like that. They also notices that Tega had an awakening. The thing he noticed turns out to be a turtle. Chihiro notices the species of that turtle. That's because she also had a pet turtle before. Boys gets ready to make it into a dinner, shocking the poor little girl, who was thinking of keeping it as a pet. Next, they arrived at their camp, and Arata is heating the rock to cook their dinner. And Chihiro is crying because they did such a horrible thing to that cute little turtle. On the other hand, Tega and Riku have finished chopping that turtle into pieces. And after having a taste of one piece of that turtle, even Chihiro, who thought it was cute, finds it very delicious. They all laughs and enjoy that turtle meat. But this happy night is not going to last that long. Something dangerous is about to be happened to them. A few days have passed, Tega and his friends are still alive. And after spending many days in this new world, they come to realize that the mammoths doesn't pay any attention to them in the same way that they pay attention to them. After all, those mammoths are the strongest creature in the world. A few more days later, they gets ready to move from there and find a new cave to live in. Because Ren saw a big bear when he went to pick figs. What's more, he has never seen such a super huge bear in his life before. Riku is an expert of extinct animals thinks that the bear must be a cave bear. And here is the detail of a cave bear. Pause the video and read the details. And such a huge bear come to their cave, their wooden fence will not stand a chance. And they will become that bear's food. So they all gets ready to search for a new cave. Chihiro asks Riku if they are in Africa, because she thinks that the tortoise was probably an African spurred tortoise. However, that was not the case. Arata informs her that from what he noticed he thinks that they are somewhere between Africa and Middle East. And the period is less than 1 million years ago. Maybe less than a hundred years ago. And if that's the case, he thinks there might be humans other than them in this world. These surprises everyone because if it's less than 100,000 years ago, then there might really be some humans. Ren gets happy thinking that if they find that human settlement, then they will be safer than they are now. Arata gives them the most dangerous dark truth of humans, that they are the most dangerous animal in the world. No matter the time period, they are the most dangerous being in the world. His speech shocked everyone. They start their searching for cave again without speaking a word, because if they face animal, they can chase them away with fire and all. But what about humans? They are different, and their team also have women with them. After searching for some time, they find a cave but the entrance of that cave was same as their cave before. They want to find a cave with a very small entrance. Then Rikako finds very interesting cave, more like a crack in between the rocks. The crack have a very small entrance, making difficult for big animals to enter inside. The inside is wider than it looks, and it's curved out like a cave inside, so they don't have to worry about rain and all. And the big animals won't be able to get in either. They found a perfect home in this new world. And there are many small streams flows into the lake. So they don't have to worry about getting ambushed by crocodiles while collecting water. Now all that left for them is to gather food. And there are lots of animals in there. Because the lake is just below their settlement. Though, it's little far away from there. Tega, Riku and Ren, who are searching for food, gets ready to explore the western side too. After walking for a while. Ren starts to get little scared because they went pretty far away from their cave. Then they notices something below the mountain. Two human beings with spear and axe in their hands. Three friends get shocked to see that there are really people in that world. They wonder if they can communicate with them, but they seem dangerous because they are carrying weapons with them. Then Tega notices there seems to be something wrong with those two men. Those two men seems to be worried about something, and there are sounds coming from the mountain. 
Those two guys speak in a language that the three friends didn't understand. The three friends notices the voices coming from the mountain are getting closer and closer. Cave men comes out from the mountain with weapons in their hand. They jump at the two men. They kill the two men in a very brutal way, one can imagine. They saw the true nature of man firsthand. The sight was so disgusting that Ren started to puke. The cave men notices Ren's sound of puking. They starts to search for the source of that sound and come closer and closer to where the three friends are hiding. If they come any closer, the three friends will be found out and they will meet their demise like the other two men. So Tega picks a stone and throws it with all his force. He throws the stone to the other side, to the opposite side from where the three friends are hiding. The caveman gets ready to go and check the place from where the sound is coming. And from the way those cavemen run, Tega realized that they can't outrun those cavemen. The cavemen then leave from there. Tega wakes up and rush down to see if they have left, seeing that the cavemen have gone farther away from there. Tega goes to check the one who got killed. Riku also followed him. One of the men still seems to be breathing. He says something in his language and dies after that. Ren who was keeping a watch on those cavemen shouts out to Tega and Riku that those cavemen are coming back. They gets ready to leave from there. But before leaving, Tega takes those weapons with him. They come back to their cave and inform Dorada and other ladies about what happened. And the one who got killed looked like African. And the one who attacked them looked just like cavemen. They give the detailed description and details of the cavemen, which shocked Rikako, because from the details she heard, she realized that those cavemen are Neanderthals. This shocked everyone because they are in the time and place where the Neanderthals that thrived in Europe and the Homo sapiens that originated in Erifka clashed with each other. To Neanderthals, Homo sapiens are just invaders, and so Tega and his friends, Neanderthals will kill them on sight. After hearing all this, Tega, for the first time in his life, he felt the sensation of death up close and personal. And at the same time, he also intensely felt the vivid sensation of being alive. They found themselves in the most dangerous era in history. Next, a leopard seems to have killed a deer, and three friends have come there to snatch that prey from that predator. Their plan is to jump out and yell really loud and scared that big cat away. But Ren is super scared because if that leopard doesn't run then they will become that leopard's food. Since they haven't eaten well in a while, they got no choice but to go with the plan. They jump out and move towards the leopard shouting and yelling really loud. The cat is also surprised to see those three men coming at it shouting like that. It roars back at them. Arata and Ren get scared after seeing that the leopard is not running away but instead it is roaring back at them. However, Tega on the other hand, didn't stop, he kept going. Didn't flinch. Seeing such a bloodthirsty eyes, the poor cat got scared and run away from there. Tega asks Ren and Arata to grab the prey. They take the deer away from there, while Tega was keeping an eye at that leopard. He is ready to kill that leopard if it comes near them, and is also like, come at me if you want, I won't fall back. The leopard realizes that the man standing in front of it is dangerous, so it didn't take any action. Ren and Arata snatch its prey and run away from there, even though they take away that leopard's prey, but the leopard didn't chase them. When they return back, Ren inform everyone about what kind of stunt Tega pull in front of that leopard. And Chihiro, she seems to be more interested in that leopard. She is excited thinking if they took any picture of that leopard. Next, Tega asks Riku who was cutting the deer to give him some sinew, like tendons. After getting some of it, Tega went inside the cave to work on something. Inside the cave, he has cut the sinew into thin pieces. And he wants to make the spear he got from that Homo sapiens. Wait, he is also a Homo sapiens. He wants to tie that stone arrowhead into the wooden handle with the help of that tendon because tendons are very flexible and can tightly fastened. Then when the tendon dries and contracts, it becomes even more secure. He finished making his spear, and girls are pretty impressed with his spear. He comes outside to check his spear, swings it couple of times and throws it at an old tree. The spear seems to be working fine. If he hits a man with that, he can surely kill that man. And with that spear, he is sure that they can fight against large animals. They can hunt the crocodiles and leopards. Among all of them, Tega seems to have adapted to this new world and has the strong will and determination that they're going to survive and make it out of that world alive. Next, there seems to be some people where the Neanderthals killed those two Homo sapiens. And these people seems to be the friends of the one who died there. There is a beautiful lady. Her name is Tyre. They all mourn the dead and she is one hell of a beauty. Next day, Tega, Arata, and Riku are making some tools and weapons. They are using stone to make stone knife, hammer it and shaping it into the shape of a knife and all and Riku have fixed the axe they got from the African guy. Riku is surprised to see the sharpness of that axe, and Tega have also finished making a knife. 
They tried making those tools by looking at the real arrowhead that they got along with what little they learned in college. After dozens of failures, they were able to create usable stones tools. However, compared to the real thing, their tools are still lacking. The thing that made them go so far to create those tools was none other than the sight of those Neanderthals. If those Neanderthals finds them, there is no doubt that those Neanderthals will kill them on sight. That's why they made those weapons to defend themselves. Now that they have weapons, they gets ready to go and hunt some animals. However, they notice something that the large animals doesn't pay that much attention to them. To survive they have to hunt these animals. And Arata, Tega, and Ren have come out to hunt some animals. A big wild boar have catch their eyes. After seeing the size of that boar, Arata is having doubt if they can even hunt that giant thing. But Tega is confident that they can do it. And Arata is not confident because the boar is as big as a cow. This is an era of large and powerful animals after all. And they have plan on how to perfectly kill that boar. They all climbs up to the higher grounds. And after seeing that giant boar close up, Ren starts to lose confidence. But Arata is ready to do like Tega told him. Throw their spears when Tega does. Thinking that the spear might not pierce through its head and shoulder. So they aim for its stomach. Tega throws his spear at that boar. It stabs the boar on its stomach. Ren and Arata also follows his lead and throws their spears at the boar. However, their attacks didn't kill that boar. The boar notices Arata and charges toward where Arata is standing. The boar hits the rock where Arata was standing and make him fall on the water. Now that he is in the water, next to the boar, he is finished. But Tega comes from behind with his spear and hits the boar right on its stomach. This time the spear seems to have penetrate deeper than the other spears. The boar struggles in pain starts to move here and there, making Tega to lose his grip from that spear and fall in the water. The boar gets ready to charge at him. Tega also pulls out his knife and gets ready to fight with that boar. Ren, Arata, Tega, they are all scared. However, that was the last struggle before dead. It leaves Tega and doesn't attack him. Goes a little further away from there and meets its end. The wild boar was over 200 kg, and it's already getting dark. The cries of wolves and hyenas were closing in, so they only take little amount of that boar meat and went back to their cave. They are part of cycle of hunting and being hunted. They were happy that they are living and are alive. They only took three leg pieces. Next day, when Tega, Arata, Chihiro, and Ren come to get their meat, but they all get shocked to see that their meat is being feasted by some kind of lizard and birds. Tega gets ready to get their meat back from those thieves. He hits those thieves hard with his spear. They get scared and run away from there. Here's the details of the lizard. Pause the video and read it. They all comes to him asking if he is alright, and are surprised to see him suddenly jumping at those lizards. However, Ren's mood seems to be little down for some reason. Next, Rikako and Yuka have finished collecting woods, and they are getting used to this new life of theirs since it's already been a month. And they have noticed the one who have changed the most and adapted to this world is Tega. And Yuka seems to have fallen for him because he kind of reliable and manly now. Rikako gets surprised to see Yuka being Tega fangirl. The girls come back after collecting the woods, and Tega and others also come back with a dinner. After that Yuka's attitude changes toward Tega. They enjoyed their big meal, and starts to wonder if there is a purpose behind them coming to this world, because they know more about this era than the average person. And Riku have outdoor skills and some tools. Shihiro knows a lot about animals, Arata knows archaeology. Rikako is even specializing in this era. However, Tega doesn't think that he is special like them because he is not good at anything. They all laughs after hearing that, because no one has adapted to that world better than Tega hat. However, he doesn't think that he has changed at all, but he has noticed something that after coming to this world, his head feels mysteriously clear, because he knows exactly what he is supposed to do now. Not like back in his world where there was so many choices and he didn't know which one to choose. Now he clearly knows what he is supposed to do. Don't die, hunt prey, protect everyone. In life, Ren gets mad at them for talking like that. He still doesn't seem to have adapt to this new reality. Yuka also knows how Ren is feeling right now because she haven't adapted to this new world. She informs them that she is scared every single day and that she doesn't want to die and want to go home. Tega promises everyone that he won't let anyone die. His words lighten their mood. At night, Yuka wakes up because of some sound and it's Tega. He seems to be going somewhere in the middle of the night. He comes outside to watch the moon and count the stars. Yuka, she too follows him outside. They starts to admire the beauty of the night. Yuka breaks down in front of him, starts to cry, saying that she is scared and all. She asks Tega to promise her that he will protect her, and in return, she will do anything for him. Anything he wants. Next day, Tega, Arata, and Chihiro went to hunting. 
However, Tega's mind is not in the place. He is still thinking about what Yuka told him last night. Since it's already been a month, he seems to have built up that excessive energy and wants to release it somewhere between. Since his mind was somewhere else, the prey got away from him. Now Chihiro is mad at him. He then clears his mind. Because if you starts to think about something like that in this kind of world, dead is inevitable. They gets ready to look for some other prey. Back in the cave, Riku have make a bow and arrow. And it seemed pretty good. But Riku wants more stronger bowstring because what he has right now can't hunt anything beyond birds and mice. He has also made a shield out of that tortoise shell. After seeing that bow and shield, Ren realizes that Riku is going to use these on those Neanderthals. Yup, they have to if those Neanderthals attacks them. Ren is surprised to see that they all are adapting to this new world without having any problem. Especially these four. And he is just too useless compared to them. On the other hand, Arata is also sharing things about what makes him happy. And as for Chihiro, she is happy when she is around animals. And about Taiga, he doesn't know what makes him happy. Riku is also informing Ren why he was able to adapt to this new world without having any problem. But he is also scared. Riku also asks Ren what he really likes to do. And about that, Ren also doesn't have anything that he wants to do. But he likes having fun with everyone. Riku tells him that he can do that here too, in this new world. On the other hand, Arata is also saying the same thing to Tega that he can do anything he likes in this free world. Then Chihiro notices something, some kind of a big deer-like animal. They gets ready to hunt. The animal lover gets ready to hunt. And she is the one running ahead of them. And about the path, and the thing that makes Tega happy. He doesn't know it. He is just pushing himself on. In that land of freedom that spreads out before his eyes. Next day, when Tega, Arata, and Ren went for hunting, they found some bare footprints on the ground. Since the Homo sapiens were wearing shoes, they notices that these footprints are made by Neanderthals. Suddenly the bushes there starts to make some sound. They hide themselves and gets ready to fight if anything dangerous comes out. Then a rhinoceros comes out from the huge bushes. Not a normal rhinoceros, but a woolly rhinoceros. And it also has a baby with it. Since it's a mama rhinoceros with baby, it gets angry after seeing those humans. And charges toward them. The boys run to the higher ground which made Mama Rhinoceros difficult to climb. Tega gets ready to stab it with his spear, but Arata stopped him because his little spear won't do any damage to that giant thing. Mama and Baby Rhinoceros then leaves from there. After that they come back to their home and inform Riku and Chihiro about the Neanderthals. Riku didn't expect Tega and his team that they will encounter those Neanderthals' footprints to that direction where they went for hunting. Because to the north where Riku was keeping a watch, he also saw some smoke and he is sure that they are Neanderthals. Now they got no choice but to move from there. But Chihiro doesn't want to move from there. Because finally, she can sleep soundly now. The other girls also come there asking why they made Chihiro cry. They inform the other girls too about what happened. And Tega also doesn't want to move from there. They have all gotten attached to this rock cave. The thick reliable rocks protected them from dangerous beasts. And give them a place to rest and sleep soundly. Riku gets ready to give it a shot and protect that home of theirs. Because even if they search for a better place, they won't find something like this crack cave. If that's the case, then Arata suggests them to barricade themselves and strike back against those Neanderthals if they come for them. They gets ready to protect their home. Yuka comes to Tega pulling his clothes, giving him signal that she is ready to do anything he wants. He tells her not to worry and that he will protect everyone. And he himself noticed something that whenever he says something like this out loud, he felt his body warming up from deep within. He has never felt something like this ever in his life. He gets ready to do everything to protect his friends, his home, and his family. On the other hand, the Neanderthals have also found their footprints. They then follow the footprints, which is leading to the mountains, and they are ready to eliminate this new invaders who have invaded their lands. A new danger is coming. Next, they have gathered an ouch straight sticks to make spears, and their strategy is to gather an ouch spears and fight the Neanderthals from inside their cave because the entrance is very small for multiple people to pass. While they are preparing for defense, Tega gets ready to go down the mountain and hunt some small animals. Arata also informs him that if they get attacked and separated, they will go to their first camp and meet there. Before leaving, Chihiro gives him a water bottle and a flashlight just in case. He gets ready to go down the mountain and Ren was keeping a watch on the top of a rock. He is still worried about his friends, but since there was no signs of Neanderthals nearby. Even so, just in case, they made enough tools to defend themselves. And for some reason, the woolly rhinoceros have settled down nearby their cave mountain. But if they don't disturb it, it will not disturb them. He is out there to gather some figs and hunt some small animals. 
He finds many large rodents. Back in the campsite, the watchman notices the Neanderthals who are coming their way. Ren informs his friends to quickly put out the fire because the Neanderthals are coming. Ren prays and hopes to not let them notice the fire smoke. But it was inevitable. It's a smoke. They notice it. Ren informs them that the Neanderthals have noticed them and are coming there. Riku tells the girls to hurry up and put out the fire with stones and sands. Rikako comes to Arata. It seems like they have chemistry between them. He calms her. He gives her the bow and tells her that if they find them, then they will have to do it. To ease her a little, he tells her not to worry because they have shields and bows and also have better weapons than those Neanderthals. After putting out the fire, they all went inside the cave and hide there, ready to fight for their life if those Neanderthals notices them. Arata asks Rikako to attack them with bow and not to hesitate at all. While they hold them with their spears and axe, the Neanderthals notices that the fire was just put out and starts to search for the one who put out that fire. They find the crack to the cave. However, the entrance is very small, so only one person can enter at one time. The boys are also ready to strike them down if they enter inside the cave. One of them enters inside the cave. Arata attacks that man with his spear but he missed that man's chest and only hurt him on his arm. Now they are found out. The Neanderthal starts to shout. Even Tega, who went hunting notices the sound. The fight begins, but the entrance is small, so they are still at advantage. However, the Neanderthals are strong because they were built different than Homo sapiens. Since two boys are blocking the entrance, Rikako gets ready to shoot them with her arrow from below. Surprisingly, her aim is good and manages to hit the caveman in his leg. The man falls down screaming in pain. They become more aggressive after that, tries to force their way in. Ren who is blocking them with his shield and spear. His spear gets broken. Tego arrives at the campsite and is shocked to see his friends barely hanging in against those Neanderthals. Even though they are modern men and are weaker than those Neanderthals, they haven't let any one of those Neanderthals enter inside the cave where the girls are hiding. And Tega is just shocked to see the situation there. What is he going to do now? How is he going to protect his friends, his home, and his family? Arata and Riku are struggling against those Neanderthals. And Tega is just frozen in that place after seeing that fight. His legs are shaking and are not moving an inch. He is scared because there is no way he can beat them all. He starts to cry, apologizes to everyone because if he goes out there, they will kill him too. One of them strikes Arata and he falls down. Riku's hands are also full, so he is unable to help Arata. The caveman gets ready to give a finishing blow. Then a loud noise come out from the forest. Everyone stops their attacks and looks behind. Tega have comes out from the forest. The Neanderthals are confused to see him. And Tega is also confused because he doesn't know why he jumped out like that. Arata shouts at Tega saying run away. Arata my man. Even in that situation he is telling his friend to run away. Instead of come and help Tega. However, Tega didn't came out of the forest to just run away. He calls those Neanderthals to come at him. The Neanderthals, they all charges toward Tega and forget those other who are inside the cave. Tega runs into the forest. Riku informs Arata that there is still some inside the cave. The two boys gets ready to take care of those who are inside the cave. And as for Tega, he is using all of his strength to run away from those Neanderthals, who are pretty good at running. Tega keep running and running. However, he is not running blindly. He has a plan. He is taking those Neanderthals to the location where the rhinoceros is. The Neanderthals have also already catch up to him. He throws his spear at the rhinoceros. It hits the rhinoceros. Now there is going to be a bloodbath here. The Neanderthals also realize that that tiny guy have f up something that no one should have. The rhinoceros charges at them with its full speed. Tega jumps and hides himself behind the tree. As for the Neanderthals, the rhinoceros perfectly hit two of those guys. As for the others, they barely dodge the rhinoceros. The remaining ones who didn't suffer that much damage gets ready to chase Tega. Tega run as fast as he could, but the Neanderthals caught up to him. He hits Tega with his wood weapon, which Tega blocked with his spear. Tega then take off the cloth which he covered the head of the spear. Now the fight begins, it's three versus one. And Tega is super scared because those three are something else. He is scared thinking he is going to die and they are going to kill him. Tega swings his spear at them, but none of his strike hit them. They starts to laugh at him because none of his attack hit them. But Tega is not someone who will go down that easily. He jumps at one caveman who was near a cliff and he fell down the hill or cliff together with that man. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it then watch this video here. Also like and subscribe for more.